Um, very good, so we're recording. And it seems to me, uh, we have the luxury of this being an intimate group, we can, we can do um, real introductions. So I'll start, I'm Ann Ricketts, Associate Vice President for Research, Teresa. And Teresa Mangum, a professor in Gender, Women, Sexuality Studies in English and director of the Oberman Center for Advanced Studies. Cheryl. Cheryl. I'm Cheryl Ridgway, Research Support Coordinator in the Office of the Vice President for Research. Ann Knudsen. Or Ann. Ann. <laughs> Multiple Anns. I'm Ann Knudsen, and I'm a grant administrator who supports class with the arts and humanities and international programs. And our special faculty guest, Anna. <laughs> yeah, I'm Anna Merino. I'm very happy to be in this meeting. Uh, I am a scholar of a comic book and graphic novels. I'm also a writer. I'm a professor at the Department of Hispanic and Portuguese. And I'm here like because I'm very interested. We are a group of colleagues, fellow colleagues, Corey Krimor and Rachel Williams, and we want to develop something related with comics uh, with the Sawyer seminar. So I'm here to take notes and learn a lot to Great. try to. <laughs> So, this yep. is the best teacher student ratio we're ever going to get. And, and just to give you a little more background, Anna. So, Cheryl Ridgway is my colleague in the Vice President for Research Office. She oversees the limited submissions. Mm -hmm. um, and then Ann Knudsen is the uh, Mellon czar, along with Teresa. She's, uh, you know, Teresa has had several successful Mellon grants. And Ann Knudsen has just been such a valuable member of that team. Uh, tending to budget and things to keep you focused on the creative work of the proposal. Yeah. So I, I will um, share now the, the slide. Very good. Is everyone seeing the slides now? Yeah. Yes. Very good. Okay, so um, I wanted to mention at the outset that uh, the Office of the Vice President for Research oversees thousands of grant applications a year, but I think I most admire the Mellon Sawyer Seminar Program, and that's for a number of reasons. First of all, it's prestigious. Um, you, if you looked at the proposal or, or the guidelines, you'll see that Mellon only anticipates receiving 15 to 20 proposals. Um, that suggests to me that they only probably invited 25 institutions or so to submit proposals. So it's very prestigious, it's by invitation. Um, the second reason I'm so fond of the program is that it funds intensive collaborative study and true intellectual inquiry. Um, in my experience, a lot of grant programs can be obsessed with launching new programs and other sometimes gimmicky deliverables. The Sawyer Seminar allows you to go deep into scholarly inquiry. And that's really, in, I think, quite rare in grant opportunities. Um, it's also a great program because the probability of our institutional proposal, and again, we can only put one forward, um, but the probability is quite high that one would be funded. They said uh, they'll probably get 15 to 20 proposals. They're going to fund about 10, so that 50 to 60% range, range of funding, it's, it's just um, unthinkable and really as good as it's going to get in the modern era. So for all those reasons, I just think it's a wonderful program. Um, so we're gonna go through the slides, but then we'll obviously, because our numbers are small, have we'll, we'll get the slides off the screen so we can have a, a more of a conversation. Um, but let's look here at the purpose. Um, so uh, the, the program supports comparative research on historical and contemporary topics of major scholarly significance. Uh, it's for bringing a, a variety of folks together, as you see here, faculty, international visitors, postdoc fellows, graduate students, um, and uh, students from a variety of fields, mainly but not exclusively in the humanities, arts, and interpretive social sciences. It engage, engages productive scholars in comparative inquiry that would, in ordinary university circumstances, be difficult to pursue. When I was looking at that phrase, ordinary university circumstances, I thought what we wouldn't give <laughs> for ordinary university circumstances. Um, in effect, the program funds temporary research centers, 
Now they make clear in the guidelines, they're not looking to institutionalize a center, but they wanna give scholars a full year to go deep on a, on a topic. Uh, the mission is really important to attend to, and I suspect Teresa is going to have a few things to say about this as well. Um, the foundation is now fundamentally interested in the themes of social and racial justice. That was announced by the Mellon Foundation last summer. And interestingly, of course, that's just as the social um, justice movement was going on, continues to go on in the country, but started last summer. Um, but I think Teresa would say that Elizabeth Alexander, the president of Mellon, really had the foundation going in that direction and the social justice movement gave it just another sense of urgency. Um, so as it says here, they're looking for a strong focus on race and ethnicity and related intersectional analyses, as well as those that focus on filling in the gaps left by more traditional narratives about the history and culture of the Americas. And maybe I could pause there, Teresa, in case you wanted to say a bit more about that change in focus at Mellon. Well, it's interesting that they have have not made this um, a centerpiece of the Sawyer seminars, but it's but the new director of president of Mellon, um, as Anne said, Elizabeth Alexander has made really clear that she sees this as the work of our moment, and um, and the direction of the grants that have been given in the last year has clearly indicated that priority, and and I think so many of the topics that people are working on here on campus. Um, either already do or could do with the kind of reconceptualization that I think we're all looking for around diversity, equity, and inclusion um, could be really tailored to, to meet that priority in ways that would only make the projects better. Yeah. yeah so the next couple of slides, we'll slog through the process. And again, Cheryl Ridgway, who's on the call, oversees this process. Step one is the informational session. Uh, you can check that off. You're attending an informational session. Step two is an internal letter of intent deadline. That is Monday, March 1st at 5 p.m. Um, we have the details here, but I should say, uh, we will send you the slides or we'll post them on the website. So don't worry about writing down all these details, Anna. Um, so, but uh, just for discussion, I'll, I'll I'll um, read these off. It's a one page single space letter of intent, um, including the theme, a brief rationale, the faculty members likely to be interested, contact information for the project directors or co-directors. And that is sent as a PDF to Aaron Hackathorn at the, Oma, uh, at the Oberman Center. And my sense, Teresa, I'm not sure we even talked about this explicitly, but I think the um, point of the letter of intent is really for planning purposes. Um, it's, it's not to gatekeep or eliminate people. It's more for planning and maybe gauging interest and even helping people identify additional collaborators and so on. So it's, um, that's the purpose of the letter intent rather than to narrow the field. Right, and when we, the last two um, seminars that we've successfully applied for um, with a group, with groups of faculty members, after the letter of intent, we really sat down with each team and advised them. Yeah. Um, and as Anne said, recommended additional collaborators. And one other, um, one other thing that Mellon has indicated interest in is if there are faculty members at local universities or colleges who could be part of the seminar, including community colleges, yeah. they uh, and cultural institutions, they would be very interested in that. So it's a great chance to build relationships with the colleges near us also. Good, I, I know at least three people, three faculty in three different institutions in Iowa who are linked with the idea we have. So. Ah, excellent. Good. Okay, apologies for this slide. We actually host a communicating research um, expert and she says, do not do text illegible, text heavy illegible slides, but we just wanted to kind of get the whole process out there. So apologies for this slide. Um, so then step three is the internal proposal. Um, there's a, a link in the slides to that competition. And that is a four page project description 
and it will feature your thematic threads that will run through the seminar, the rationale for raising the central questions to be addressed and the significance of them, and the cases to be studied. Um, remember, this is a comparative um, study is what they're looking for. So you might be comparing nations, regions, social aggregates, or time periods. Um, the uh, internal application requires a one-page budget. And again, thank you, Ann Knudsen, for joining us this morning. Ann Knudsen can just be an excellent resource in budgeting. And we'll probably return to this point a number of times. Uh, a great aspect of this program is that it allows for a postdoc salary and two graduate dissertation fellowships. Um, so uh, again, uh, Ann has already worked and, and Stop me, Anne, if I'm over, over promising your services, but Anne has worked on a couple of applications before and I'm, I'm quite sure you'd be willing to help with the internal applications, Anne. Um, the final piece of the internal proposal is a two-page two CV for each project director. Um, now, this is a, a less text-heavy slide. <laughs> Step four <laughs> looks more straightforward. Um, the agency deadline is May 3rd. Um, so we'll... Um, with a deadline, internal deadline of March 29th, we will um, meet quickly and make a recommendation so that the applicant that's chosen can get to work on their final application. So we will endeavor not to be your slow step. A few more nuts and bolts, and then we'll get to more conversation. Um, the, the opportunity allows for $225,000 for one year really important is this uh, notion that they know it will take time for planning. So you don't have to schedule for the coming academic year. Academic year 22-23 would be, I would think, the likely timing of, of the um, seminar. Um, as we mentioned already, you can have a postdoc and two graduate student dissertation fellowships are allowed under the opportunity. They want graduate students to really be active participants in the seminar. And then Teresa has already made this point um, that seminar leaders are encouraged to invite participants from nearby institutions, community college, liberal arts colleges, museums, research institutes, et cetera. And to that, I think we would add, don't forget about the jewels on campus. We'll, we'll talk about successful proposals in a minute, um, but the Center for the Book was the focus of uh, one of the proposals or a feature of one of the proposals and, and adding those great organizations on campus, I think is very helpful. The, well, and I maybe should have started with the Oberman Center has been absolutely critical to the success of these applications, providing administrative and institutional support, having that humanity center endorsement um, and just helping cultivate the proposals. Review criteria, obviously, are always important to bear in mind as you're preparing your proposal. And uh, the Sawyer Seminar is quite clear about what they, how they will judge the proposals, the significance of the subject, the aptness of the plans, um, the opportunities for comparative study, the rationale for the comparisons, and then the scholarly accomplishments of the participants. And then um, we keep uh, emphasizing this point that Great to bring in diverse institutional representatives. And Teresa, I thought you might want to talk a bit about the successful projects uh, that really Oberman has had everything to do with shepherding and, and getting through the process. Um, <clears throat> well, thank you for the kind words, and I'd be happy to talk about these. So the first one that we had um, was led by Paul Dilley, Catherine Tackow, and Tim Barrett. And part of what is as Anne was saying, part of what made this so original, is, there were two things really. So what they wanted to do is study the way manuscripts moved across the ancient and classical, the pre-modern world. And it turns out one, that paper production and manuscript creation has, has almost exclusively been studied one world region at a time. And so one thing they did that was a, a, a brilliant um, maneuver, <laughs> intellectual maneuver, is to say we want to bring together people from Asia, from Europe, 
um, from other parts of the world who studied paper making and manuscript and, and you know book making manuscript creation and have them talk to each other and it turned out this was just stunning to all kinds of fields of study and they have they would bring in two or three people at a time from those different world regions who had never had conversations before and so that was a really creative aspect of the project the other thing they did is they um, worked with Tim Barrett and decided that for each of the major forms of paper, they would hold a workshop when these scholars came through and actually make the paper they were describing at, in, in an intellectual scholarly historical way. And again, this meant that scholars from around the world, I mean, they would be almost in tears saying, I've been working on this for 30 years. I had no idea. This is what was involved in the process. This changes my scholarship going forward. So it was just an amazing intersection of those two groundbreaking moves um, so that for the course of a year or a year and a half or so, um, they would bring together these groups of scholars every, you know, once every six weeks or so and, um, and have a, a mini kind of day long conference followed by a workshop um, with Tim. And in the meantime, as with all the Sawyer seminars, a regular seminar, just like a great reading group, was preparing for each group of, group of speakers by reading their work before they came. Um, if you wanna go ahead to the next one, I'll talk about that one and then we can come together. So the, the recent one that actually is gonna finish up this year because it was delayed for a year by COVID um, is very different. It's called Imagining Latinidades, uh, Articulations of National Belonging. And in this case, we had Ariana Ruiz, who's a literature scholar, Chicano literature, um, Daryl Wanzer Serrano, who works in rhetoric, um, but uh, uh, also Latino studies, Latina, X studies, and then Renee Roca, who is in political science, but uh, also studies um, the politics um, and, and more social science dimensions of um, Latino experience. And so what they wanted to do is to, to, to decide with, a, again, a large group, if you think about the Latinidad is as a state of mind, as a cultural state of being, rather than um, a check off ethnic identity. How does that enrich, complicate, diversify what we even mean when we talk about Latina, Latino, Latinx? And so in their case, again, they brought together um, a series of, had a series of one or one and a half day fora. And often they would bring in a social scientist, um, a literary or um, arts scholar, and frequently an artist or a creative writer. And so they were sort of reproducing the way they themselves brought interdisciplinarity to a set of questions. And one of their very creative innovations is um, because Daryl is uh, a fabulous at technology uses of creative uses of technology, they developed a podcast series. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of each of their symposia, they would sit down with their guest and have an hour, hour and a half long conversation that they're now in the process of editing into um, more manageable um, units of podcasts. And they're making these available on the website that they've created. And they're they're wonderful discussions of some key distinct question for each of the gatherings that people will be able to use in teaching that opens up research questions. And, and that also um, reminds, uh, reminds me of one other feature of Sawyer Seminars. And as Anne said, part of the joy of these seminars is that Mellon sees these as an opportunity to build capacity and in intellectual um, uh, possibilities rather than usually you'd be required to publish a book or, or have some objective outcome. And of course, they're quite happy if you do, but they don't require it, which is amazing. What they do ask for is a very rich website. And so they want you, in a way, they're asking us to think about some kind of web production 
as the, the documentation that shares out the knowledge that's being gathered. And so both groups uh, were very creative. The Latinidad is, is still underway, um, but you can, um, you can Google them both. They're on the library, housed on the library site and they just have grown richer and richer. So that would be one more thing to figure in planning. So I'm going to stop sharing, which will enrich. And I think I will also stop recording to serve candor. Yeah.